Hi everyone, welcome to the grind. Sorry, I was looking for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback. Hello ICA. Oh, where am I looking? I'm cutting it, I'm cutting it. I'm looking at the prompters. Hello ICA, where's that? This one, right? End of flashback. It's over there, buddy. It's over yeah, there. That's sorry. our friend. That right one. There. I was so used to it being here. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, there, yeah. there, there. All right. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to The Grind. This is where we talk about the sermon that we heard this past weekend. And we have wrapped up our Behold Him series, a worship series. And Pastor had talked about being committed to Jesus for life. And he talked about sacrifice as well. And... I guess like, you know, sacrifice looks really different each person, but what does sacrifice look like for you? Oh, like what Pastor Ed said, sacrificing means about like costing something, right? It yeah. costs something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have a question for you guys. Okay. Like, uh, for example, uh, like, like a situation about sacrifices. If, for example, Katrina mentioned last week that she went to a Coldplay concert. Oh, Someone yeah. gave her a free Coldplay concert. And you know that someone hasn't been to one. Uh -huh. Would you sacrifice that Coldplay concert? If they've never been to a Coldplay concert, they don't know what it's like. They don't know what they're missing. So I'm going again. <laughs> okay, then let's oh, say oh. if that guy is a big Coldplay fan. Uh huh. Oh. Uh, and they still haven't been. Yeah. Then. Well, they really should have. I'm going again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I put in the effort to get tickets, so they need to. There was no free ride. They need to. Wow. You know. I sacrificed, <laughs> I remember I sacrificed my time and I was about to, you know, gym and then I was just like sitting there, you know, about to enter my credit card details, you know. So they need to go through the same pain as well <laughs> of refreshing the page and being made to wait because that is what true sacrifice is. So you're you basically know. saying earn it. Yeah, earn it. Okay, okay fine. I'm, I mean, I'm sure. No comment. <laughs> yeah. Um, or what if you lined up for food? and a friend joins you who wasn't in the queue with you oh. and suddenly goes, oh, that looks nice. Yo, oh. <laughs> high school brings back memories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. There's always that one friend who doesn't go, bother go to the cafeteria. Or even that one friend who would, ne like you guys would go to McDonald's, all of you buy except that one guy. Yeah. Or that one person yeah. and would like he talk just, to you and like he just, just works get the room, food right? from you. Just yeah, works and the then like, goes like goes to each person gets a fry yeah. and then from that person, oh here, let me help you with yeah. chicken nugget. Mm. Or he, he wouldn't even ask, just like, hey, hey guys, how are you doing? And just <laughs> grab food from you. Come on, come on. I mean, it shows how comfortable he is with you. But no, I am not willing to sacrifice even McDonald's. Yeah. That's no, a, I don't think so. That's a painful sacrifice. Say what you want, but no, I, I, I earned that McDonald's. Anyways, yes. so basically being a living sacrifice for Jesus requires our all. So mm. in your situation, like, mm -hmm. what do you think being a living sacrifice for Jesus looks like for you? One eternity later. I mean, in small groups, there's often awkward moments. So this is the awkward this silence, is the where, awkward we, silence yeah. where we think about our answer. Um, yes. What was the question again? Oh, clearly he was paying attention. <laughs> and to me. In small groups, there's also so, so always, that one person. There was always that question. <laughs> That's like, what was the question again? I think it's putting whatever whatever dreams or plans that you have. Yeah. And then giving those up and saying, God, do what you will. Yeah. Mm. Because we all have an idea of how we want our life to go. Right? Yeah. Not just like in moments of worship, but just like generally, like what you want to be like in 10 years or yeah, you know, yeah. what you want to achieve, right? Yeah. But to give that up and say, God, do what you want is kind of, yeah. I mean, I, f I feel like that is what living sacrifices is. It's sacrificing your yeah. life, the direction of your life. Yeah. Mm. It's scary. It is yeah. scary. Yeah. I mean, just going off that, because I remember um, someone preached this a message about living sacrifice before, like how like dead sacrifice versus living sacrifice. Dead sacrifice mm -hmm. wants to put on an altar, mm -hmm. that's it. I mean, it can't crawl off the altar, right? But like a living sacrifice, you know, they technically have the choice to crawl off the altar and yeah. to put, go back on. Mm -hmm. So basically living sacrifice for Jesus involves a choice. Yeah. And I think for me, 
uh, being a living sacrifice for Jesus is, um, is yeah, in a way, surrender. I right? surrender my hopes and dreams and desires, whatever, mm. and be mm. like, you know, Jesus, uh, I'm surrendering to you, and I'm being on this altar um, as an act of worship unto you, and I don't yeah. know what it's going to look like. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, right, living sacrifice does, it does involve intention. You know, being mm. all in for Jesus, it does involve mm. intention, it does involve a choice, mm. right? And oftentimes, we're, we might be willing to crawl off the altar, so to speak, mm -hmm. because of what, you know, the world demands of us, you mm -hmm. know, maybe like, you know, I mean, like to have one foot in the world, I mean, to be, you know, in the world and not off the world, it is a challenge. Yeah. And so have there been moments where you've been tempted to conform to the world or like, you know, what they expect of you? I think peer pressure, even when we're no longer kids, yes. yeah. uh, is still a real thing. Yeah. 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 Um, Cause like, if you're out, working yeah. or something, there's pressure to conform to, I don't know, your company culture or yeah. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> all the all the social norms that come with hanging out with people yeah. who are like in the world basically. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's temptation to just like put all your, put your Christian side yeah. aside um, yeah. and then just go with the flow. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like for example, like say if I meet people who are not Christian and then they ask me what I do, um, and if, have, there have been moments I say, oh, I'm a pastor, they're like, what? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Tell us yeah. more. Yeah, Ooh. you know? And then there have been moments where I, you know, don't say I'm a pastor and I just say like, oh, I, I do, you know, a lot of communications at church, you know? Yeah. And then they seem to be more open I guess and then when we get a little bit closer then I drop the pastor card and then they're like oh because I feel like once you there have been moments where I, when I go straight to people and I mention the fact that I'm a pastor um, there's immediately a wall yeah you know it's somehow easier to, to tell people about Jesus and you know as a as a kid but I think it's just more like having that childlike faith mm. Um, mm. I know like with adults we get a little bit more aware of social cues like oh maybe this yeah. is not the right thing to do or whatever it is mm -hmm. but I think once you've experienced Jesus you know you just can't help but you know respond to him right that's what ultimately um, what worship is it calls for a response to God or like a, the being all in to be committed yeah. and I know it is a challenge to be committed especially when you've got different factors going mm. in you know I've known people who unfortunately fell from from faith you know people that I you know I've looked up to and you know they've let things come in the way and that's yeah. sad right so for and I know we're all living in the world where t sin is very present yeah you know so definitely a challenge to be in this world but not off this world so you know mm. uh how what does it look like for you to live a christ-centered life well it does definitely um take effort to put christ as the center of your life yeah mm -hmm. um Obviously, the usual, like, you know, spend time with the Lord, you know, pursue Him, be known as, you know, after a uh, person after God's heart, man after God's heart, woman's after God's heart, yeah. whatever. Um, but it really does take a lot of intentionality. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm realizing. Um, not what I'm just realizing, but, you know, it's always a, a, a strong reminder that each time living Christ centered life, a uh, Christ centered life, it is, involves a lot of intention. Yeah. So I, th I think it requires a certain amount of courage as well. Yeah. Because going back to what I said earlier about trusting God with the big things. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, it's, it's one thing to hear God speak to you about mm. what he wants you to do. Mm -hmm. It's another thing entirely to follow through on it. Mm. Yeah. To actually listen and go, okay, that's what, I'll, that's what I'm going to do. Mm. Yeah. Because sometimes it's not always the easiest thing to follow what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there is a certain element of courage yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. For um, sure. And sort of, yeah, to have like childlike faith just to go, okay, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna yeah. do it. Yeah. But when it would be easier to maybe take another path. Yeah. I mean, again, think about living sacrifice, right? Like you're basically a sacrifice on an altar. And I'm thinking the altar is like really exposed. Yeah. It's not like you're hidden away. Mm -hmm. right? So anything can come at you and you just like on it, super exposed, like you're supposed to be surrendering. It's like, but what's going to happen? Right? It may yeah. also be on fire. Exactly. Oh, wow. danger. <clears throat> so it's, yeah. But then that's the thing is that when you choose to be a living sacrifice, you're choosing to be Christ-centered. Yeah. 
right? And so it does take a lot of, yeah, like you said, courage. I think it takes a lot of like trust and faith yeah. and surrender yeah. as well. So yeah. I think yeah. I completely agree also in terms of trust. It's like, like, like what we said that when we are in Christ, mm -hmm. We have to be all in. Yeah. yeah. So have you guys remembered that game where the trust game where oh. everybody when you fall during a trust fall? Oh, yeah, the trust yes. fall thing. Yes. It's basically like that. Like yeah. you, you yeah. put your complete trust. I, so yeah. that basically means that you have to bring everything in. It's not like you're gonna put one foot in, yeah. or one of your one of the people will like you know what I'll just give up. This guy's too heavy or something. Oh. So no. so <laughs> I think it's like yeah. that. So even for for marriage in marriage like in in our marriage. Yeah. life with my wife as well it's the same thing it's mm -hmm. it's rachel putting her whole trust in me that in our marriage mm -hmm. i will do everything for her yeah mm -hmm. pretty much laying my life for her as well Aww. and yeah so i think i think this one of the part where i uh, pastor had actually gave me a, a different view of mm. what it means to have jesus as the center of my life yeah. so That's yeah good. Uh, yeah, no, trust fall for me, um, I'm a little bit scarred for it because I did like a little sermon about like trusting and stuff like that. And at the did end you fall it, the wrong way? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> did you fall forward? No, 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 no I did not. <laughs> Alright, so basically I'm sharing my heart, right? And to, to the youth and then the youth like, oh yeah, we should do a trust fall to show that we're here for you. And then literally, okay, let's cool. And then so we did this thing where I fell, but then they literally just caught me and then dropped me. I'm like... <laughs> Let's just say I've never done trust fall ever since So you had trust then. for like a split second. Yeah, literally. Nice. It was just such an awkward trust fall. I was like, <laughs> again, I was like, that was the last time I've ever did a trust fall. And uh, because <laughs> it scarred me for life. Kidding. I love my kids. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So like, yeah. So we wrapped up this series. We talked about what it looks like for, you know, our worship, worship to yep. be an act of basically a lifestyle. It's not just mm. like something that we do yeah. on Sunday service, something to do in our personal time everywhere every day so hopefully you can continue to cultivate a lifestyle of worship mm -hmm. and uh yeah just continue to press into the lord and hopefully you know and believing that he will meet you wherever you are at so thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time Bye bye, bye.